Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show off a nice complimentary exotic combo that not many people may have given a try to just yet. Conditional Finality from New Raid is perfect against a lot of endgame combatants, and its simple design allows players to pull off some impressive feats. Now, combining the weapon with Synth-14's helm will not only give you more power with a 25% weapons of light buff, non-stop overshields at max with fast grenade regen, but also the effect to blind targets within your bubble will provide and prevent a number of combatants from wiping us out before we manage to land the first hit. In something like Glassway GM in the final boss room, both overloads and wyverns will become less of a problem, and even in the new Mars Battleground final room, I can see the following setup doing surprisingly well. So, let me show you how to best maximize this. But to start, you're going to want that Bastion, where casting your super grants overshields to your allies. Casting a barricade also grants you and allies overshields while also regenerating lost shielding. And then you want offensive bulwark, where upon having an overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee find the blows extended duration of overshields. The subclass effects will focus on providing users a best of both worlds setup for damage and survival. With Bastion at play, we can utilize the damage reduction being provided and then make full use of our grenades to disperse groups easily. I would recommend you have the suppressor grenades as these here are perfect for what the build is designed to do. Fragments used are Echo Persistence, where avoid abilities applied to you such as overshields have increased duration, Echo of Instability, where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds, and Echo Cessation, where finisher final blows creates a burst of void damage that makes targets volatile. And much smaller to what we are usually used to, the following combos will make use of any void weapon with a pulse of place on it very effective from start to finish. Persistence will increase our base shield duration by only a few seconds, while Cessation and Instability will make targets volatile, which both of these will allow us to make full use of a pulse of brace on a larger scale. This will also mean in case of an emergency and we need our grenades back fast, we can rely on the following to quickly escalate the missing feature without the need of discipline based mods. This may sound more PvP as we go throughout the loadout, but the setup works out really well against the more tougher combatants that come battling towards you with no space to slow down. For the mods and stack section, as we are using Helm of 14 for its bubble effects, the rest of the armor and stats will need to support the base abilities we have available. Resilience at tier 10 is a must for that 30% damage reduction and also for faster class ability regen. However, tier 7 is a good spot to aim for as long as you make full use of the void breaches provided that will give you a 10% class ability regen and the bolstering detonation mod for a 20% class ability regen via grenade damage. As our build has a higher tier already and void breaches will be made plenty of, we don't need to have any additional mods to support the stat further. However, as mentioned before, if we need more mod slots then do the above following and make use of the benefits as much as possible. The discipline is the same as we have ours at tier 7, but we'll be making use of a number of benefits from our subclass alone. The offensive bulwark aspect will grant us a steady regen rate of grenade energy every time we have our own shields up, which when combined with the font of focus mod for a plus 30 towards our current stat, means that we can get a tier 7 stat with fast ability regen on top of it. You can further supplement this with a distribution or a bomber mod for each time you use your class ability, but this will depend on what your mod slots are like afterwards. This of course is the easiest part to achieve without needing to have a lot of investment to put into it. After the main parts are complete, you should have room to add on the armor charges and additional mods. Charged up times 1 will extend how many armor charges we can hold on to by plus 1, while Void Weapon Surge times 2 will increase all Void Weapons by 17% for however long our armor charges are active. Time Dilation will help this further by providing an extra 5 seconds to all time based mods, and having Hammock Siphon and Shield Break Charge will allow us to have our armor charges at a higher rate. Ashes to Assets and Power Preservation are also some good mods to have when applying towards your bubble with its fast cooldown rate, and if you tend to use your special weapon a lot, Having the special finisher mod will help a bunch here in endgame content. Now lastly for weapon, you have a lot of room to pick here in terms of secondary and heavy being used. I highly recommend a weapon that has a repulsive place on it so you can benefit from the extra protection, but also offensive bulwarks effect as well. A good weapon for this is the Veles X Pulse Rifle, which is an amazing PvE void pulse weapon that most people should have gotten. 
It rolls with the Gim perk as mentioned, but also comes with two damage perks, with Golden Tricon being the best with offering you a 15% on kill and then a 50% buff on the ability kills after. Matching this with the following build means that you can get a constant overshield and damage buff if plot correctly and sustained. This is great for what we are after as we want to make full use of the overshield for the grenade benefits, but also if you have the bricks from Beyond Seasonal Mod attached, you can get plenty of heavy available in the making as well. After that, having the conditional finality with the setup also makes the build a powerhouse in the Grandmaster content. The damage buff from Bubble, along with the weapon's solar and status effects, means that we can take on Tormentors pretty well without them hurting us so much. On top of that, it allows us the ability to keep tougher enemies within the blinding bubble effect for longer, as they can escape if we keep using the status shot on them over and over again, thus making certain enemy types a lot more bearable. If you don't have the following, then any status fusion with chill clip is a go ahead with the setup, such as Riptide and Deliverance. So, overall, playing into the effectiveness of the shotgun itself allows us to make full use of the power it can offer on the highest difficulty provided. It's already strong on its own without no buffs provided, but adding on a bubble and the blinding effect as well pretty much shows our guardians saying to the enemies, go on, I dare you to step foot into this bubble. 9 times out of 10, they go ahead and do so, and well, that's the end of them. It's a match made in heaven as it works great against ultras, champions, tormentors, etc, who have a habit of closing the gap and being tough to take down in close quarters. If we take the glassway boss room as an example, the moment witherings and overloads appear in the small room, all eyes are to focus on them and get rid of them as quickly as possible. Placing a bubble down near one of the main entrances and then using your shotgun will make a quick work out of these types of enemies. Another example is the Lake of Shadows Tormentor room where you get locked in with the main boss who is highly aggressive. Using this setup you can blind, freeze and detonate all within the safety of your bubble. This is just a small example as to how the combo works in certain scenarios, and even with the shotgun in hand you can still pull off the same shenanigans just with the subclass alone. It has great personal defense, high damage multipliers, flexible mods and effective abilities that are all designed for end game. You can also add in the seasonal mods as well which also enhances the setup further, but that is optional. The only downside I can see with this is that you can't use this when you have rockets or grenade launchers in the more smaller confined rooms because of happy accidents via bubbles or barricades. But outside of that, you should definitely be using this if you like safety in mind. But what do you think of the build? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content share then please leave a comment below at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great to share today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.